growing up in the city, it kind of made you like the person you are today. It's a hard city, so it's kind of like you growing that mental toughness, um, growing up in a city school, being a public school kid. Baltimore has like this tag on it of being like a negative city. It's always about the killings, the um, robberies. It's not always like that once you're from here, but um, when you're looking from the outside in, you always see it's always that negative effect. It's never the good side of things or like the guys coming back and helping the communities. So after my mom passed, that's when I knew it wasn't normal when I went back to school. I think we took like a week off of school. Everyone was like, like I was the weird kid or something. Like everyone like felt sorry for everything they did. And I was like, and like to me it didn't register, but like that really like felt weird because everyone was kind of like trying to comfort me. After my dad passed, it was kind of a bunch of things that made me feel weird or out of place because I didn't have parents anymore. And I know a bunch of Baltimore City kids like went through the same thing of not having parents in the household, but I couldn't talk to them anytime I wanted or I couldn't see them if I wanted to because um, they weren't here, obviously. And kids in the city like always live with a, a grandparent or someone else in the family. And then um, kind of like us, we moved around with my grandmother and um, try to make it work from there. It was hard for them and it was hard for me because they just lost their mom and I just lost my daughter. So I had to step up. I had to be mom, grandma, and help them the best way I could. And that's what I did. We always looked up to her. Um, we knew it was hard for her, so we didn't really try to like make it hard for her, even harder for her, but I mean, we loved everything she could do for us even if she couldn't, so um, we, I don't know, we just appreciated everything. Your support system helps adversity by like helping you push through those things that are like negative to you or those things that bring you down. And mentally, um, I guess men being mentally strong, it helps you through it because you know that you're, strong, you're a strong enough person to get through it. Back to the high school I went to, uh, Digital Harbor. It's mainly a technology school, so um, technology based. We're gonna work out with a couple of my old coaches um, that taught me the game. The first time I seen uh, in it was uh, 10th grade. I never once had a teacher call me or email me about in, as far as just being rude disrespectful. Uh, if it was anything, it was something good. It was always positive. So that's, I say a lot about him as a person, you know, a lot about his family. The practice field um, where I practiced in high school, football, um, it's not really much, but it's what we practice all year round. Rain, snow, anything. It's our reality that we live in in the city. And I mean, I mean, we can't change it, but I mean, all we can do is just kind of like be a big brother to those younger guys that's thinking about going down that path, honestly. It's, it's people in the city that can change it, but they won't, cha they won't change it. They'll make that's certain they moves. There's certain, like, different city councilmen that make certain moves to keep that environment the same. Like, they close down rec centers every year. Like, it's like, I only know about three rec centers right now off the top of my hand, and I don't even know if they still open. The colleges don't come to Baltimore City because of the academics and I don't know, I think, I don't know, it's just like a trust thing, honestly, because they don't trust that a Baltimore City kid could do what, do what another, another kid could do because of the background he came from. It's always that negative tag on Baltimore City kids and Baltimore City people as a whole. So I was looking at the TV in the draft, and his phone rang. And he kind of pointed to the phone as if to say, this is it. So I'm looking at him, and everybody got their cell phones, they hear it. And then 
all of a sudden on the TV it said Ian Thomas had been drafted by the Carolina Panthers. Carolina she Panthers. Indiana Panthers. And I got on the phone to call his brother and my son who was at work at the time. And I heard the crying and screaming. And I said, Boo, because my son's name is Antoine, but I call him Boo. Ian was just drafted by the Indiana Panthers. He said, Man, <laughs> there's no such thing as the Indiana Panthers. I said, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And they just picked him. And he said, Man, calm down. Calm down, man. I said, I told you the Indiana Panthers. I'm your mother. I ought to know I'm listening to it. And then everybody is saying to me that was in the house, Grandma. It's not Indiana. He went to Indiana to school. I said, well, here, somebody take this phone and tell him what's going on. <laughs> Early on, there was a lot of struggles. Still is a lot of struggles, but um, we just kind of learned, learned as we go and didn't take no for an answer. It helped me realize, like, what all I have and, like, what all I have to be thankful for, to be, like, close to my family still. Um, having that person to look up to and talk to definitely helped.